and uh, that first half uh, did not go our way. Um, but what I like about our guys is, you know, uh, small victories. And the challenge was to come out at halftime and win the third quarter. I thought our starting group came out. We get up 10-0 in that third quarter, forced them to call the first time out, and we win that third quarter. Our next goal was to win the fourth quarter. And after being down 13-0 to start that fourth quarter, uh, guys like Malik and Wancho and Trey and Emmanuel and Mason, they go out there and they win the fourth quarter. So even though it was a tough loss, we got down by as many as 48 points, uh, which is what you never want. I'm just proud of the fact that we didn't roll over, we didn't quit, we didn't uh, you know, let go of the rope. Guys had some competitive pride, kept on playing, and uh, you know, I was proud of our guys for that. What was your message at the half to go out there and then win that third quarter? It was simple. You know, hey, listen, um, they're a good team. Let's go back to doing what we do, uh, and let's go out there and let them know that we're not going to roll over. We're going to play this team again. And uh, I think it's really important that they know that with our starting group that we can compete and we can, you know, make them uncomfortable. And obviously, I think without Eric Gordon tonight, Ryan Anderson, uh, you know, James Harden, Luke Mbamute, Trevor Reza, Chris Paul, they had a lot of guys step up. So I have to do a better job uh, in, in preparing our guys and, and, and getting our guys ready. But the, the message is simple, Ali, compete. All right, and every huddle that we brought in in that second half was one, two, three, compete. I don't want anybody feeling sorry for themselves or rolling over, and I didn't see that. You speak of Chris Paul before the game and how much of a competitor he is. What did he add to this team tonight? Oh, I mean, you got you know one of the best point guards in the last 20 years on that team, and you add that to a guy in James Harden who was arguably the MVP last year, you know, obviously right behind Russell Westbrook. So you have uh, a floor leader, a competitor, a guy who is going to make all of his teammates better and obviously who can also score and make plays for himself. And obviously I think that's a great addition for this team. And um, people were worried after their first game of the season, can they play together, Chris Paul and James Harden, or are they going to be fine? Uh, trust me, Chris will make sure he does whatever he has to to help James and this team win as many games as possible. You started Wilson tonight and then and Will Barton as well. Just kind of what went into your thought process as far as going with that starting group and then the big man rotation. It was, it, was, it was simple. You know, I mean, uh, you know, Nicole is our guy. And, uh, you know, they play so much small ball and three-point line uh, that I want to use Wilson Chandler out there and try to switch as many of the small pick and rolls as possible. And, uh, you know, Wilson's very comfortable playing, uh, playing a four. He did it a lot for us last year. Um, so it was, it was really a simple idea for us to obviously put uh, Wilson Chandler out there. And Will Barton, I mean, he's, he's a hell of a player. And, you know, we can't afford to just bring him off the bench more undermanned. Let him play. He never gets tired. And uh, obviously tonight didn't go our way, but uh, we have to get ready for Memphis coming into our place on Friday night. How big a sigh of relief was it to get Jokic <laughs> coming on back and playing? Against yeah, them? I had, uh, I had, uh, I was really worried. You know, obviously I'm thinking about Paul Millsap back in Denver, and then obviously to see Nicola go down like that, having no idea how serious it was going to be. And uh, you can tell the competitor that he is. He comes back, he gets it retaped. He comes back and says, Coach, put me back in. I want to I play. I want to try it. And, you know, we're getting our ass kicked. You know, and he could have easily have said, I'm going to hang out in the back and watch this with my feet in, uh, in a cold tub. But he wanted to get back out there. So, Ali's question earlier, are there any positives? There are positives. And I, I think it's important, as I told our players, you always have to find a positive in a negative situation. Tough loss. We got embarrassed for portions of the game. But I love the fact that we didn't quit. We kept competing. And that's going to help us moving forward. Are there pick-and-roll lessons defensively to be learned here uh, tonight? Or uh, how, do, how do you view that? Yeah, I mean, obviously I'll go back and watch the film. One thing I told our guys, uh, we have done things a certain way for 17 games, uh, and we went into this game and we changed, and that's on me. And obviously with no Gordon and no Anderson, that was uh, – a big part of the reason we made those changes and now they don't play and uh, so we, we made a change after 17 games and that's poor coaching by me because I didn't trust what we've been doing for 17 games you know I reacted before it was an issue and uh, I think that put our guys in a tough spot defensively and uh, and I own that to our team you know I have to do a better job and it's a valuable lesson for me to learn where did you guys most miss Paul tonight if you had to pinpoint a couple areas um, I would say uh, his offense uh, obviously, uh, you know, we couldn't score. You know, we had a hard time scoring the ball. You know, 17 points in the first quarter, 23 in the second quarter. So he misses offense. And then obviously, you know, defensively, he's, uh, he's a good defender. He communicates and he has great discipline and um, anticipation. So I think when you have a guy like Paul Millsap, you miss him. The guys miss him being there. 
gaining confidence from being on the floor with Paul Millsap. And uh, when things aren't going your way, you don't have that four-time All-Star. You know, other guys have to step up. So I, I think we miss Paul in every way possible. But let's be honest, Paul's going to be out for a while. So we better get used to playing without Paul Millsap. And uh, we're going to need guys to step up. And, uh, and I think they will. Hey, let's, let's be honest, this is a really good basketball team. They're the best team in the NBA right now. So I'll give them a lot of credit. They're a heck of a team. Uh, and we'll use this as a learning experience the next time we play them. This has been such a bizarre road trip in, in a lot of ways. Um, are you kind of ready to just go home? Or do you take stuff away from this to then move forward? Or, or how do you just sort of view the oh, last say, four days? So. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's uh, you know, life in the NBA. I mean, this is, you know, the NBA is a uh, up and down season. You know, you're highest to the highest one day. And the next day could be lowest of the lows. Um, obviously, it's, a, it's been an emotional trip. You lose one of your best players for an extended period of time. Um, and then you're going home after a real tough loss. You know, but we're going home together. We're going home united. And we're going home with a great belief that we're heading in the right direction. And that starts, obviously, on Friday night against Memphis. Uh, we've done a great job of protecting our home court. And we have to continue to do so.